Western movies are a dime a dozen. The genre became so oversaturated that the very things that made them unique became predictable tropes and cliches that are now referenced in pop culture. I know you. To many, it seems like westerns reached their creative limit a while ago. Another genre of film that is also really saturated is animated talking animal movies. While some of the ones made recently are still quite good, there's just so many similar ones out there that they're starting to blur into each other, especially in their aesthetic designs. Most people watch them, laugh at the dog joke, and forget. And I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with that, but it starts to get old after a while, like it did with westerns. Have these genres reached their creative potential? Can a western still surprise us? Or are we just repeatedly scratching the same surface of something with endless creative possibilities? To answer those questions, let's take a look at an overlooked animated film that masterfully and bizarrely combined these two genres together, ultimately giving hope for the future of both. Rango. Released in 2011 and directed by Gore Verbinski, Rango tells the tale of a chameleon who is thrust from his home and is left to wander the desert in search of not only his self-identity, but a small town akin to something out of a spaghetti western, where he eventually becomes a gunslinging sheriff who embarks on a mission to protect and serve the anthropomorphic townsfolk of dirt. The distinct aesthetic of Rango is exceptionally unique, especially with its character designs. Like I mentioned before, the traditional design style for basically every animated talking animal movie ever is exactly what you'd expect. Clean, cute, and marketable. Again, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with that. It's just that it's starting to get really repetitive. The character designs in Rango, however, are refreshingly unconventional, inventive, and fitting to the theme of the film. Every character, even the ones in the background, are visually dripping with personality. Where other movies of this sort would opt out for its designs to be symmetrical and perfect, the designs here thrive on asymmetry and imperfections. For example, Rango's left eye is bigger than the other, this rabbit is missing an ear, this lizard's horn is broken, this vulture has a prosthetic leg, the list goes on. These imperfections invite the audience to imagine the stories behind them, for example, the rabbit character, Doc. Not only is he missing an ear, but he's also an alcoholic. Since he's a doctor, maybe he served as a medic in some rabbit civil war where he lost his ear and now drinks cactus juice, the equivalent to alcohol in the world of Rango, to cope with his experience in fighting a war that ultimately led him to being a lonely doctor in a poor town full of misfits. Just those two flaws and one background character who has something like three lines of dialogue made the film that much more investing. Every character has this level of detail, and it truly shines. The human likeness in them, taken from the tropes and archetypes in live-action westerns, adds a level of realism and grit that makes each viewing of the film oddly satisfying. I could talk about the aesthetic of this movie all day, but to sum it up, Rango is basically Coen Brothers meets Utopia, and I cannot get enough of it. Now if you thought Rango was just another recycled western with a unique aesthetic, you'd be mistaken. While the common theme in most western films is the discovery of redemption, the theme in Rango is the discovery of identity. Who am I? I could be anyone. The protagonist starts off nameless and alone in a vacuum. He's an empty book, a blank canvas thirsting to be someone, a hero. His character design even reflects that, being that he's a chameleon that can't blend in. Throughout the course of the film, he creates a name, a character that belongs to it full of mannerisms and a past, and conveniently gets out of conflict, not by his own actions, but by luck. When brought face to face with Rattlesnake Jake, a real gunslinger with probably the coolest character design in the whole movie, who also symbolizes death, Rango's masquerade falls apart. He's not a gunslinging heroic sheriff, he's just a cowardly lizard trying to be something he's not. He crosses to the other side of the road, a metaphor for death, and meets the spirit of the West, an obvious reference to Clint Eastwood, the heroic face of Western cinema. The spirit of the West tells Rango that instead of trying to act like a hero, just be and do what needs to be done. It's not about what you think of yourself or how you wish others to think of you as. It's about just existing as who you are right now, free of the desire to be someone else and doing what must be done for the betterment of others. It's not about you. It's about them. No man can walk out on his own story. From the death of his ego, he can now rise and become the hero that the people need him to be. He uncovers the mayor's plan to abuse his power over the innocent for his own personal gain, stands up to death, and frees the people. Though it's a simple story, the way it presents it is what really makes the movie stand out. The film has some really trippy surreal moments. Where are your friends now, amigo? Self-aware writing. The hero cannot exist in a vacuum. What our story needs is an ironic, unexpected event that will propel the hero into conflict. <gasps> humor intended for more mature audiences, Are those real? and witty banter between characters. Uh, well, you got a little something in your eye there. Who that? 
Hey, there's conjunctivitis, sir. <clears throat> it's hereditary. Oh. Well, I'm glad to hear it's not contagious. And, though bizarre, it all works together masterfully. What surprisingly stands out about this film, besides its visual style, is the action. The action and spectacle in this film is handled so much better than that of most live-action movies that I don't know if that's really good or just sad. But regardless, I'm incredibly grateful that it exists. A sequence that perfectly showcases the action and spectacle of Rango is the canyon chase scene. In this 5 minute scene, you have moonshine drinking mole people riding bats in a canyon while shooting machine guns Battlefield 1 style at our heroes trying to escape on a wagon being pulled by a boar while fighting the anthropomorphic Mad Max hordes to a western rendition of Flight of the Valkyries. And it's not just the concept of such ridiculously over the top things happening on screen that makes this scene amazing, but the way it's all pulled together. The cinematography, though not exclusive to just this scene, is brilliant and immersive, complete with wide-sweeping shots that clearly present the action in an engaging way, the music composed by Hans Zimmer is adventurous and exciting, the use of character designs are amazing and clever, for example this owl turns his head all the way around to avoid getting punched in the face, the sound design sucks you into the spectacle, and this moment where the toad is single-handedly reloading and firing a rifle at bats ridden by mole people while hanging out of the side of the wagon as the music swells is without a doubt one of the most satisfying badass things I've ever seen in a movie. And I really mean that. I adore this sequence. It's something that's never really been done before or since, especially within the western genre. Rango really shows that western films don't have to rely on the tropes and cliches of the past. Sure, the film plays around with them, but it's done so in the vein of parody. And when it does uncommunically use a trope, it's done in a way that makes for some really memorable moments. Besides that, Rango adds a fantasy element to the western genre that really hasn't been explored before. Well, except for Ghost Rider, but the only things I really enjoyed about that movie was 1. Nicolas Cage being Nicolas Cage. <laughs> and 2. The part where Sam Elliott and Cage ride off in the desert to Spider Bait's cover of Ghost Riders in the Sky. Oh, that's hot! That's hot! Rango, on the other hand, explores fantasy elements in the western genre, though not to the extent of something like Dark Watch, really well, ultimately making for a world that I want to see more of. Rango is a weird movie. It's an animated talking animal western about the search for self-identity with a gritty unique aesthetic, unconventional character designs, eccentric humor, brilliant cinematography, a magnificent score, impressive action and spectacle, surprising elements of fantasy, and this toad single-handedly reloading and firing a rifle at bats ridden by mole people while hanging onto the side of a wagon. I mean, come on, it's amazing! The combination of it all makes for a truly bizarre masterpiece that shows that we can do so much more with the genres that we already have. We just have to get a little weird with it. I found a human spinal column in my fecal matter once. Thanks for watching. Oh.